Hi, my name is Fakhri Mitchell. This is a short form on habitat fragmentation, a retrospective look at the interaction between conservation, development and government. This film does not try to resolve any issues regarding the centricity development, but instead it would like to raise questions which can lead to best practice. Any major property development almost always involves development, government and conservation as the major role players. Government plays the role of regulator between society's need for development and society's need to conserve biodiversity for posterity. Yet I get the impression that government is not always as informed or capable of fulfilling the role of regulator. Why do I say this? In 1996, the Western Cape government approved the development of Century City. In 2000, at the opening ceremony of the development, the then Premier of the Western Cape made the following remarks. Is there a way for conservationists to argue for conservation, especially when the need or pressure to develop an area for economic benefit is so great? Yes, there is, and it is called the Environmental Impact Assessment, or EIA. The EIA reports on the environmental impact of a development, and it includes public participation, which allows interested and affected parties to be involved with the process of approving or rejecting parts of the development. The Century City development went through an EIA process, part of which stipulates the drafting of an environmental management plan. Let's see the result of this EIA process from the air. The yellow polygon represents almost all of the Century City development in 2006-2007. The green polygon represents the nature area which was set aside as stipulated by the EIA process. Also note the large white area to the south of the nature area. This is the Canal Walk shopping mall. The green area is known as Intaka Island and it covers 16 hectares. It can be divided into the natural wetlands to the north and the constructed wetlands in the south. I will now compare how the area comprising the shopping mall and the island changed from 1998 to 2006. First the area photo from 2006 and then in 1998. Unfortunately I couldn't get aerial photography from 1996 and earlier. As can be seen from the 1998 photo, construction on the development site has already started. The lack of earlier data prevents me from making a proper diagnosis. The Century City development raises many questions. The main question being whether best practice was followed. What do I mean by best practice? Um, was all available data used to weigh the costs and benefits of development and then the costs and benefits of conservation? Did government fast track this development because of the potential 1.6 billion rand? And then, was this a case of economic development taking precedence over the environment? If this is the case, is it possible to develop best practice and still be able to respond proactively instead of responding reactively? How prepared can environmentalists be in the face of growing development and loss of habitat? Despite all the questions, I am not disheartened. The positives of this whole process are 1. The EIA process was followed and 2. A 16 hectare area was set aside for conservation. It remains questionable though whether this was enough. Century City is built and nothing can be changed about it. But how do environmentalists prepare for future developments like, like this? 
It seems as if the best way to influence a development decision is to know whether a portion of land and its vegetation represents a remnant or fragment worthy of saving or conserving. This requires information and knowledge about undeveloped land within urban areas, often called wasteland, and seemingly unfit for development, but possibly containing rare and endangered species. This movie has shown one of the tools which enables the collection of knowledge, specifically spatial knowledge, namely the geographical information system, which can help provide environmentalists with informed decision-making for these sites.